Welcome to another Fast Tip video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's tip, we're going to talk about disaster recovery, how to fix your data when, like me, you accidentally mess up a bunch of records in your Microsoft Access database. Okay, so first, some background. I was working on my database that runs my whole business. My memberships are processed automatically every night, but once in a while, I get a request from a student to send them their next class right away. So I have a button in my database that does this with one click. I click the button, they get their next class. Now I wrote the code for this button when I first started doing memberships years ago. I used a lot of commands to open forms and move between various fields and records, open form, go to control, go to record, the cursor bounces around, and other commands. So you'd create a new order, it would open the order form, set the field value, move to the next record, and so on. This is how I preferred doing it at the time, and it works, but every now and then it can glitch. I tend to not like stuff now that involves opening forms and setting values. It's good for beginners to learn how to do that, but there's better ways. So just this morning, I rewrote the whole thing, the whole subroutine, using SQL statements and record set loops like you should, you know, do it properly. When it came time to update the totals for the order at the very end, I made a classic mistake. Can you see what it is? If you know SQL, you'll recognize it right away. This code is supposed to update the merchandise total, the adjustments or the discounts, because members get a discount, and the order total for the current order. So do you see the mistake yet? If you know what this does, you'll get it. Keep in mind, this is for the current customer that I'm making an order for. Do you see it yet? See the problem? How about now? You see it? I forgot the where clause. <laughs> Classic mistake. It's supposed to update the order table and set the merchandise total equals whatever the merch total value is, the total of the order, where the order ID equals whatever the new order ID is. Just the one order, not all of them. So when I ran this for the first time, the first statement took forever. It like locked up access. So I had to kill the access process because I thought the database maybe had an endless loop or something. Nope. The SQL statement was busy updating every order in the table, 20 years worth of orders <laughs> to the same price. Oops, right? There's a couple hundred thousand orders in there. So I'm just sitting here waiting like why it shouldn't take that long. What's going on? And there you go. There you can see it, right? <laughs> I went to check out the order table and yep, wouldn't you know it, every order had its merchandise total field set to $5.99. I killed access before it changed the other fields, but still the damage is done. It changed most of the orders in that table to $5.99. Now, fortunately, I keep very good backups. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know that I preach backup, backup, backup and then back up again. In fact, I've got multiple videos on this subject, including a couple of backup templates. If you wanna learn more about automatically backing up your database daily, go watch my free tech help video on backups. I'll include a link you can click on in the description down below the video. So click on that when you're done watching this and learn all about backups and what I think you should set up on your system. Okay, so checking my backup folder, the last backup routine ran this morning at 4.10 a.m. That's when I have it programmed to run every morning at 4.10. It's almost never a time that I'm working at 4 a.m. So that's a good time. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes I am, but that, that's okay. All right. So basically all I have to do now logically is take the last good order table. Fortunately, that's the only table that was, that was affected. I have to take the last good order table from my backup at 4.10 this morning and then restore that and then copy over any new orders from the bad table that have been made since then, okay? So if I compare the two order tables side by side, on the left, you'll see the corrupted one where all of the orders have been changed to 599. And on the right, you'll see my last good backup and it stops at order ID 229714. Okay, you can see on the left and right, they match up. And then after that, the ones on the bottom there are all the new ones that came in this morning. And yes, the timestamps are off a little bit because my server is not in the same time zone as me. So the timestamps are off. So basically I need to copy over to the old table 
229-715 and later. However, there's a slight problem. I can't just copy those orders over from the order table because there are related records in the order detail table that, and a couple other tables too, that depend on those order IDs, right? Those order IDs there are linked to other tables. And if I just copy those records, if I just open up the table, you know, select the records, copy and paste, what's going to happen is those are going to be all assigned new order IDs because they're auto numbers. When you paste records into a table, that happens. So in order to copy them over, I have to use an append query as a trick. Okay, this will copy over the records and keep the same IDs from the source table when they're copied over to the destination table, assuming there's no duplicates, of course. So we have to eliminate the duplicates. I got a whole video on how to do this. Again, I'll put a link down below you can click on. It's my restore auto number video. This is pretty much the only time that I'll recommend you do this trick is if you've got some backups you need to restore. Because people ask me all the time. They're like, well, you know, I deleted a record and now there's a gap in my auto number sequence. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Auto numbers are not for you. I got a whole separate video called Auto Numbers Are Not For You. You shouldn't care what they are. But if you're restoring a backup table and you need to keep those same auto numbers, you can use this trick. Okay, so go watch that if you want to learn how to do that. And if you've never used an append query before, you don't even know what an append query is, go watch that video too. Okay, so the first step was to restore a good copy of the backup order table. That's the good data, okay, on the right. Unfortunately, that was the only table that was affected. Next, I have to delete the records from the corrupted database file that are already in the good backup. So basically, we're going to delete everything from 229714 and before because we already have those records in the backup. So delete all of that stuff. Okay, so we're going to import the corrupted order table, the bad stuff, right, into the database file where we restored our backup. Okay, we'll call the corrupted one new order T. And if you don't know how to import a table from another Access database, I cover that in my Access Expert 21 class. It's pretty straightforward, though. Next, we'll create a delete query to delete all of the records with an order ID less than 229715 which is all of the orders that are already in the good backup table. And if you again, if, and again, if you don't know how to use a delete query, I cover that in Access Expert 13. Now the new order table after the delete query has only the new orders that came in since the backup. Okay, it's time now to move those over to the order table. But again, we can't just copy and paste them because of the auto numbers. So we'll have to set up an append query like I mentioned earlier. Right, we've got a good table with all of the orders that came in before the backup. That's in the good table, the order T. Okay, and we've got a table with all of the new orders that came in since that point, but they have the wrong dollar amounts. But at least at this point, we're ready to join them together with an append query. Okay, so we're going to make that append query, append all the records from new order T into order T, and we're going to run that query. This is what I cover in that other video that I recommended, right? The restorer deleted auto numbers and now when you're done running the append query check the results open up your order table and you can see that you have all of the orders now in one table everything from 229714 and before is correct because those records were from our backup everything from 229715 and after has been copied in from the corrupted table you have the correct IDs, so your relationships to the other tables are okay. However, you still have the problem of having to manually correct those merchandise totals. They're all still set at $5.99. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about that. Some manual data entry may be required. That's why it's important to keep frequent good backups. Fortunately for me, I've got a couple of different backups in addition to that. Whenever an order is processed, my system emails a copy of the invoice to the customer. That invoice includes most of the relevant order data, the customer's name, email address, of course, the courses they purchased, the order total, etc. It doesn't include everything, like their credit card number is not in there. But it's enough to where I can recreate the order in my system in case something like this happens or something goes wrong. And I also, I use Gmail, so everything is backed up forever. I love Gmail. I also keep a backup log of every order that's submitted on my web server, just in case.
Again, it's one more way I can recreate an order if I need to. Again, this log doesn't hold credit card data, but the orders have already been processed, so that's not a problem. So there you go. That's how I managed my terribly stupid update query goof. <laughs> that's what happened, that's how I fixed it. And that's how you can recover from pretty much any disaster if you make good, frequent backups. Check out my backup video if you haven't watched it already. Again, I'm Richard Rost from AccessLearningZone.com with today's fast tip. I hope you learned something, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.